For a moment, the tableau held. The four rebel noblemen at the door and ten wild, desperate outlaws crowding close behind them. Held at bay by the terrible-eyed, silent giant who stood in the middle of the royal bedroom, sword at the ready. The Escalante shouted, In! And slay him! He is one to twenty, and he has no helmet. True, there had been lack of time to put on the helmet, nor was there now time to snatch the great shield from where it hung on the wall. Be that as it may, Cull was better protected than any of the assassins, except Grommel and Volmana, who were in full armor, with their visors closed. With a yell that rang to the roof, the killers flooded into the room. First of all was Grommel. He came in like a charging bull, head down, sword low for the disemboweling thrust. And Cull sprang to meet him like a tiger, charging a bull. And all the king's weight and mighty strength went into the arm that swung the sword. In a whistling arc, the great blade flashed through the air to crash down on the commander's helmet. Blade and helmet clashed and flew to pieces together, and Grommel rolled lifeless on the floor, while Cull bounded back, gripping the bladeless hilt. Grommel! He snarled as the shattered helmet disclosed the shattered head. Then the rest of the pack were upon him. He felt a dagger point rake along his ribs and flung the wielder aside with a swing of his great left arm. He smashed his broken hilt square between another's eyes and dropped him senseless and bleeding to the floor. Watch the door, four of you, screamed Escalante, dancing about the edge of the whirlpool of singing steel, for he feared Cull, with his great weight and speed, might smash through their midst and escape. Four rogues drew back and ranged themselves before the single door. And in that instant, Cull leapt to the wall and tore there from an ancient battle axe, which had hung there for possibly a hundred years. That, my friends, is from, by this axe, I rule. A King Cull story, which you can find in this volume, Cull, Exile of Atlantis. So welcome, my friends, welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor and the Robert E. Howard Show. We have been talking lately on the Robert E. Howard Show about King Cull. And today we are going to be talking about, by this axe, I rule. Which is a King Cull story that was never published in Robert E. Howard's lifetime. Uh, I, I talked a bit in the last Robert E. Howard show about a series of Cull stories, which you could find right in the middle of this book here, that were never published in Robert E. Howard's lifetime. And so you find some odd things in them. Character names that reappear, even though they're apparently different characters. We have the situation of two lovers who want desperately to be together, but can't for one reason or another. And only Cull can bring them together with his power as king. But he can't for some reason or other. And that... Uh, does reoccur here in today's story by this axe I rule. The most interesting thing about this story probably is that this unused cull story, remember it was never published in Robert E. Howard's lifetime, uh, Robert E. Howard changed the story and turned this story into the first Conan story, The Phoenix on the Sword. Uh, he made several significant changes. I think he improved the story quite a bit. There are those who disagree. But I think the uh, Conan story works far better as a story. I think it's a more entertaining story. And I don't think it has a couple of the weaknesses that by this Axe I Rule has. Although, taken all on its own, by this Axe I Rule is a really good story. There's a lot of stuff that work that works in this story. 
basically, this is a story about a conspiracy to kill the king. There are those, of course, in uh, Lucia that don't want Cull on the throne. There are a lot of reasons, and each one of the assassins has their own reasons for wanting to uh, get rid of Cull. Uh, remember, Cull is a barbarian from Atlantis who killed the former king and took his crown from his gory head. So he made himself king in that way. He was uh, a mercenary before that. So he is the target of this conspiracy to assassinate him. And that is mainly what this story is about. It's about an attempted assassination. But there's something else going on in this story as well. Uh, in this story, we do have the two lovers who desperately want to be together, but they can't be because one is noble and the other is a slave. And by the laws of Elusia, they can't get married. The only person, of course, who can change that is Cull himself. But will he do it? Now, normally, Cull's like, sure, of course I'd do that. But there is an ancient law that says he can't do that. Uh, law and custom, for, custom forbid him uh, to let these two be together. And so that is one of the main uh, conflicts in the story. Cull is feeling like, He's sort of powerless. He's, he's a king, but he's bound by all of these rules. All these pesky rules and traditions and laws that he's got to follow as king. What a pain in the ass. So he has to follow those rules. And at the same time, there are a bunch of people that want to kill him. And they do, at one point, in the point that I uh, read you there, they do... Uh, uh, bribe the leader of his uh, red slayers, his bodyguards, away from his door at, in, at night so they have a clear shot at killing him. Now he senses something is wrong, and so he starts donning his armor right before they burst in, which is why he's better protected than he otherwise would have been. And then we have this great, great battle scene uh, between... Cull and all of these assassins who want to kill him. And Cull just goes berserk. Which he does. Cull will do this. And it's an excellent uh, battle scene. And by the end of all this, I am going to give away the ending here. Uh, he decides after all of this nonsense with the assassins and how he's nearly, after he's nearly killed and he's terribly injured, uh, he decides uh, that he's going to overrule the law and he demands his chief counselor bring him the tablet where the law is that says that these two young lovers can't be together. And so he just takes this big axe that he was fighting with and he destroys the tablet. And he says, I am the law. By this axe, I rule. So he's above the law. So basically... This story has a terrible message. It's, ba it's basically, you know, if you're a dictator autocrat or whatever, you can just be above the law. The law is not above you, which is not good. Uh, we've seen in a the actual world what happens when we have rulers like that. Fortunately for Volusia, Cull is a decent guy for the most part. Um, that is just a rough summary. Of course, the beauty is in the writing. The beauty is in the storytelling itself, which I haven't even touched on. Um, but this is a very well-written story, which might make you wonder why this was not published in Weird Tales. I believe it probably was not published in Weird Tales. First of all, why things sometimes got turned down uh, in Weird Tales, it, it was pretty inconsistent. Let's just put it that way. But I'm guessing it's because that there was no supernatural element in the story other than the setting. It was a fantasy world, a fantasy setting. 
You'd think that would be enough for Weird Tales, but it could have been just an historical story, really. And so when R Robert E. Howard changed the story and turned it into a Conan story, he added a supernatural element, a pretty strong one. And when he redid the story as a Conan story, he got rid of the whole young lovers who couldn't be together thing, which was wise. I think that was the weak point of this story, really. The strong part of this story was retained, which was the assassins who were trying to assassinate the king and that whole battle scene. That's the part of the story that really worked in the Cull story. Although the other part of the story was important because in the Cull story, at least, it was about him uh, gaining power over tradition and the law, setting himself up as being more powerful than that. Uh, the Conan story does not do that. It doesn't bother to do that. Uh, the Phoenix on the Sword takes a whole nother uh, take on it, which I will talk about when I talk about the Conan story, when I eventually get to Conan. I do, like I said, I think the Conan story works, and I think it works a lot better. The writing is just as good, if not better, in the Conan story. A lot of the passages are exactly the same. Uh, because he felt since this story was never published, there was no problem just using it uh, as the basis for this new story. Uh, it's only confusing now if you if you read this cult story and then read the Conan story and don't know and don't know that what the story behind the stories are. Then you'd be like, man, he's just telling the same story twice, which he did. But of course. The, Cult, uh, the Conan story was actually published. This one just wasn't published until the 1960s when they put together uh, the Lancer edition of the King Cull stories. Uh, so we have a story behind the story, which is pretty important. But as a Cull story, it's really good. It's one of the better Cull stories. Uh, I like it an awful lot. And most people who like the Cull stories seem to like it a lot. That is almost the end of this volume. In this volume, we also have Swords of the Purple Kingdom, which is another pretty good story that was never published. Uh, it's less known, I think, than by this Axi rule, but it's still a, it's still a really good story. Um, there are some other things in here, drafts and that sort of things. And there's also a story called Kings in the Night which is really important because it's a story, it's Kings of the Night, excuse me. It's a story where Cull goes into the future to fight alongside Bran Mac Moore. I will talk about that story when I talk about the Bran Mac Moore stories, which I'm going to be do doing uh, very soon. I've got one more episode of Cull where we're gonna wrap up Cull next week. Then we're going to have kind of a change of pace episode where I talk about something else. And then we're going to go right into uh, the Bran Mac Morn stories. So almost done with Cull. But this story, by this X I rule, pretty darn good story. Uh, almost as good as the Conan version, but not quite. Okay, guys, that's all I have to say for today. I will catch you next time. Hopefully it will be tomorrow. I'm going up to the Vaughn Lodge and the internet is, uh, it's been working lately, but it could go out at any time. So if you don't hear from me for a week, that's why. Okay, guys, I'll catch you next time.